To my dear brothers and sisters, when my channel blew up four months ago, I swore to myself one thing. Well, actually, a couple of things, if I'm being honest. That I would always be true to myself. And that if I'm ever going to pander, I would pander to the truth and never make it about the money and subscription counts. If ye, it would never be about the numbers. And the moment you start to lose who you are and start pandering for views, you would quit it, I told myself. I wake up daily in disbelief and gratitude, because not even in a gazillion years would I have thought I would have a thousand YouTube family members, not to talk about 16,000 plus. I am super grateful to you all, my YouTube family, and I would never take you and your love and support for granted, I promise. After my previous video, I was left stuck and in shock, and I can't move on without first writing you this letter. A good number of people unsubscribed after watching my previous video, and I wasn't surprised by it. I know I said I was in shock, but not by the rate of people who unsubscribed but by the attitude of people. As a matter of fact, I think it would continue to happen, not because I want to deliberately push people away, but because people do not like the truth. The truth makes people uncomfortable, judge and question everything they believe and stand for. That takes a lot of self-realization and owning up to our individual efforts, and let's be honest, not many of us want to do that. Comfort zones are called comfort zones for a reason. The test to see how I would keep up to the vow I made to myself four months ago came way earlier than I had expected. As a matter of fact, I never knew a test would come at all when I was making that vow and swearing to myself. But it came. Was I ready? No, of course not. I ran away from the comment section and went to bed. And I woke up to an unsurprisingly number of people who chose to unsubscribe. I said unsurprisingly because I went to bed knowing that would happen. It was inevitable as shown in the comment section. I had a decision to make. To either panda and tell people what they want to hear or tell people the truth and risk losing it all or avoid the truth altogether and stay in the safe in between. What did she say in her previous video, you may be wondering. Maybe because you are new here or you just haven't seen it yet. What I said was simple and I'll save you the trouble of having to go watch the video yourself. It is no secret that non-black women don't give a damn about us black women. Hence why we choose to not give a damn about them. On surface value, that makes sense, right? As we are humans and there is only so much we can give and we expect to be given back in return. So when that don't happen, there is only so much of not receiving we can accept. So we stop giving. But what I don't agree with is our total loss of empathy as human beings. It's giving, they don't have souls. So let's not have souls as well. Even people that call themselves Christians have thrown Christ's teachings out the window and still call themselves Christians whilst pushing the rhetoric, let's all be soulless. The second greatest commandment, Matthew twenty-two thirty-nine: Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Christians today, thou shalt love thy neighbor if thy neighbor loves thou. Matthew twenty-five forty. And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, Inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of my brethren, you did it to me. Christians today, F that. Christ should come down and do what he wants with the least of his brethren himself. I don't give a damn about his brethren. Now back to my previous video. Yes, they are defaulting black men, I said. But not all black men are defaulters. We shouldn't generalize and say all black men are bad 
because some black men are acting wrong, saying all black men should be killed and all black babies aborted is the darkest thing I've heard in my entire life. And that was all I said in my previous video. Yep, the end. I will be stupid to invalidate the history and experiences that has resulted to the extreme stance we see some people taking now. But I want to employ that we don't lose ourselves to the darkness whilst trying to fend off the darkness. Acknowledging the fact that as a non-African American, I cannot say I understand 100% the plight of African Americans. Even if I have read books and watched hundreds of videos on African American history since I was a teenager, I can't say that certain nuances didn't elude me, or maybe they just weren't present in the videos and books I saw. Because not everything could be understood in a movie or in a YouTube video. Not everything can be explained in words. Some things hit different when you experience them firsthand. The African American culture, experience and history is 1,000 times and more different from mine as an African who grew up in Nigeria. But I see African Americans as brothers and sisters. I am not saying I have the right to speak on African American issues. What I'm saying is I cannot sit back and watch people I consider family walking in the darkness when I can give them some light. Hence, they hit their legs on a stone. This is not me saying I'm better than you because I'm African, for I'm not. And I could be in the dark as well. And I would hope you too would shine me some light. Hence, I hit my leg on the stone. There is a problem deep below the surface and we are all missing it because we are angry and blinded by emotions. Together we can combat this problem. I just want to help because your fight isn't yours alone. It's all our fights, the black diaspora, the whole of the diaspora and the motherland. Before I drop my pen or in a more literal sense, stop punching on my keyboard, I want to ask some questions. I thought it was us against the world. How did we let it become us against us versus the world? How can we fight external forces when we've lost so much strength from fighting tirelessly amongst ourselves? What do we stand to gain from this in-house fight? At this rate, the white man don't need to worry his little white head thinking about how to end us because we are so desperate and in a hurry to end ourselves. It's so painful to watch, I must tell you. When did self-extinction become our dream? Why do we generalize, really? Because some non-black women see themselves as better than black women. No thanks to black men enforcing this narrative, of course. Does that mean that all non-black women feel this way? Because some black men date, marry, and have kids with non-black women because they hate black women or hate their blackness or blackness in general or want their babies closer to whiteness. Does that mean that all black men who date, marry, or have kids with non-black women feel this way? Yes, there are people who date outside their race because they don't date people from their race. But what about people who aren't dating their partner because of their race? What about people who happen to fall in love with people who just happen to not be from their race? On this very eggshelly and sensitive topic of black men versus black women, versus the preferences, versus accountability, versus blame shifting, versus who actually fails the black community, that I sadly cannot cover in this letter but desperately wish I could. A vicious circle I direly wish I could break. Love and unity for us all I would procure with my last penny if it were on sale. I'm not a lawyer, but I put it to us all this beautiful, almost getting dark day that the Lord has made, that we all equally, black men and black women, have failed the black community. I almost forgot. Earlier I didn't tell you what I chose to do after I woke up what decision I made. 
Three options were they not, if you remember correctly. Option one, panda and tell people what they want to hear. Option two, tell the truth and risk possibly losing it all. Or option three, stay in the safe and in between. I would like to tell you fam, that cheers to the truth and the possibility of losing it all. Yours sincerely, Yvie Anita.